Hello friends, uh, myself Febri Paiva, Assistant Professor from the Department of Zoology, St. Joseph's College for Women, Alapura. Today we will be discussing with the topic SALPA. And we can see that uh, this SALPA are small and they are pelagic in nature, that is they are seen in the water column and we could see that they are seen uh, having a free swimming existence. They are found in the tropical, temperate and cold seas and when we speak about its body as a picture indicates they are transparent in nature, almost barrel in shape and they are having two openings that is mouth and the uh, atrial apertures. And these bodies are enclosed by a permanent gelatinous, soft and very thin test. And when we continue, we could see that the body is, uh, have, is been enclosed with a circular bands of muscles. And these bands of muscles are incomplete in nature and they do not meet ventrally. Here we could see that the water enters through the mouth and leaves through the atriopo. And it is the um, and it is the uh, muscles strong, very strong, and the coordinated contraction which helps to pump out the water that enters the body in the form of a jet. And uh, the organism will move in the opposite direction. So here we can see that the direction in which the water is pumped out um, uh, in a jet format will uh, and the organism will be moving in the opposite direction to that. And we can see that pharynx is a spacious chamber and it opens into the atrium using uh, via a large gill slits. They are having a pair of large gill slits. And this pharynx, we can see that it is having a flow, the ciliated groove in the flow, we call it as the endostyne. And this pharynx is used to strain the water that enters uh, through the, uh, enters the body and uh, they uh, filter and feed the planktonic organisms. And when we speak about the life cycle, we can say that they are having a very complex life cycle. So that is, they are having an alternation, a very regular alternation of sexual and asexual generation. And here the asexual uh, and the solitary phase is represented by the oozoids. And whereas the uh, sexual and gregarious form are being represented by the gonozoid. And we can see that uh, this shows a small representation of life cycle that is asexual after uh, asexual reproduction converted into blastozoid and they form the aggregate blastozoids which develop into the gonozoid. First they develop into the female and the male and uh, after reproduction uh, the gamete will be uh, the zygote will be formed and that will develop the juvenile and that gradually develop into the oozoid. And here when we discuss with the asexual oozoid or the solitaria, we can see that uh, by nature they are having a bilateral symmetry and in the posterior the test uh, is being produced into a process, elongation could be seen, we call it as test process and the esophagus, the stomach and the pyloric, all the glands, they are being enclosed as an opaque globular mass we call it as nucleus and here the body is having uh, 7 to 20 number of muscle incomplete muscle bands and we could see that they are not meeting in the ventral side this is the dorsal ventral anterior and the posterior side and here the organism do not have any gonad at this stage and uh, instead they develop a ribbon like structure we call it as stolen and uh, this will be developed almost near from the endostyle. And this stolen, as the organism grow, it also increase in size and they bud off. They are being broken into small blastozoids and these blastozoids become gradually become the sexual gonozoid. Now, in the case of the sexual gonozoids, gregarian phase, we can say that when we compare with, with solitarian phase, we can see that these are more smaller in size and they are having almost ovoid structure, asymmetric in nature. And uh, other features which make them different from the solitaria is that there is the presence of gonads. We could see testes and ovary will be developed in them and they have very limited number of muscle bands when compared to the solitaria. At the same time, there is no test process as well as no stolen could be seen in the gregarian phase. 
This organism at this stage is bisexual in nature and the ovary will develop first. So we call that phenomenon as protogynous and the fertilization is internal. The zygote will develop uh, in a small bag-like structure in the atrial wall. We call it as uterine sac and the development is direct without any larval stage and the embryo transforms into asexual oozoids and they gradually escape from the parent body and leads a free swimming life in the water body. Later, it gradually develops the stolen and they repeat the sexual phase of reproduction. So this is the um, briefing of the life cycle. We could see that asexual oozoid form, the solitarian forms, uh, they, the stolen break into but off into small gono, uh, blastozoid which gradually develops into the uh, ooze, uh, like gonozoid. The female will develop first and then the testis will be developed and we can see that the male and the female gamete fuse within the body itself and uh, fertilization will be uh, taking place in the body and the gamete will be uh, the uh, zygote will be developed in a uterine sac in the atrial wall and they gradually develop into the oozoid and these oozoids will uh, move out of the parent body into the free uh, water column and they exist as a uh, solitary free swimming uh, stage and they gradually develop in develop the stolen and the uh, sexual reproductive phase will be uh, continued so that's all. Thank you.